But let's turn our attentions back to England. The former England defender and coach Gary Neville was watching in Germany last night and joined us live now. Gary, good morning marks out of 10 for that last night. I'd say probably five or six in the first half, maybe moving towards six and a half, seven in the second. I'm, maybe I'm being a little bit kind there, but obviously we would expect to beat Slovenia, but they had a lot on the game. And in the end, the objective of qualifying from the group was achieved, but the performance in the first half was similar to the first two games and I did see a glimmer of hope in. The second. There was a lot of talk, I'll go to the end of the game first before maybe talking about some of the things that happened in the match as well. Gary, Gareth Southgate speaking post-match about the atmosphere, the environment, the frustration that's being aimed towards him. Uh, does it feel to you any more vociferous than we've seen in previous tournaments? Yeah, I didn't, to be honest with you, we came back into the studio, so I didn't quite see what happened. Obviously, there were, I think, reported that a few beer glasses or whatever it was were thrown at Gareth. That's just not acceptable at all on two levels. There's just one basic sort of behavioral issue that you know you should never throw anything at anybody. And secondly, I think Gareth's been an incredible coach for England, a servant to England over 15 to 20 years, not just with the first team, but with the under 21s and as a player, and he doesn't deserve that. He's one of the real sort of good guys that England have had. Yeah, criticism, yes. Booing, yes. I think that England teams down the years have had that. I do think that there is an element of surprise, maybe not with Gareth, because he's seen it all before, but I do think there is element of surprise with this group that the criticism that they're getting, but that's just off the back of the standards that they've set. It's really simple. I They've achieved more, they've achieved better, they've played better, and when we see them not playing at their best, then we, you know it stands out. It's quite stark, and I think at this moment in time, there are players who are outstanding players, great talents, great, great players who are playing well below their standards, and I think that's why there's a frustration. It seems to get a little bit better as the game wore on, and in particular, when Kobe Manu, Anthony Gordon and Cole Palmer were all on the pitch. They were signs of life in that second half. Yeah, and I would add Trent Alexander-Arnold to that as well at right back. He played a couple of passes, one particular that I remember down the sort of right-hand side, which played, I think, Cole Palmer in behind. But you're right, the introduction of every substitute improved us. That sometimes can happen. The game opens up a little bit. Players are a little bit more tired. But I genuinely felt that those players that came on would probably improve us before the match, not just probably at the end of the match and Kobe Manu getting control of the game in midfield. I was surprised, I think Conor Gallagher is a fantastic player, but the profile of player that I felt that we needed was a controlled player, a player who could get us playing, I think that helped with that. I think the team looked more balanced and the football looked a lot more fluid when he came onto the pitch. I liked his interview at the end, thought it was really mature, thought Cole Palmer. Did really well when he came on, Anthony Gordon showed glimpses, so I think the team that we finished with, you thought here we go, we can hang our hat on something here, it looked like it had more of a fluidity to it. A balance, it looked more relaxed in possession, couldn't composed, and I think that's what this England team are capable of. And it'll be really interesting to see how many of those that finish the game start on Sunday. Well, it was really interesting that Gareth Southgate in his post-match interview, one of the quotes was, we're balancing blooding them in a really difficult environment. But I think back to some of the squads that you were in, the likes of Michael Owen or Wayne Rooney, tough. If they're good enough, surely you just chuck them in. Yeah, I mean, they were one player, obviously, you're talking about. They were talking about three or four at once, but I don't think there is any option. These players not only are... Uh, they're not only young, but they're actually, I think, our best players in respect of ability and talent, and that's the reason you can't hold them back. And actually, I think they're the best solutions for us at this moment in time to be more comfortable out on the pitch. I completely understand the experience point and the know-how point around being around the blocking tournaments and understanding that keeping clean sheets and a stability to the team, but I do think that we've got to try and free up a little bit. Um, it's what obviously every England coach has been demanded of for many, many years. And for Gareth, it's no different here. But he's got an arsenal of talent to call upon, which is maybe an embarrassment of riches. It's maybe making his job slightly more difficult. And when you think that Madison, but Grealish and Rashford are not even in the squad, and you've got all those players that are currently in the squad, I think now is the time particularly with what happened in that second half. And Gareth alluded to it at his post-match press conference that those lads did well when they came on and... It's probably time now for them to be given their run and their chance. Did you feel a fraction of sympathy for Conor Gallagher? It never looks great does it being hooked at half-time, and it could have been any of them after 45 minutes, couldn't it? I did feel, I really felt it. I felt it before the game for Trent Alexander-Arnold, to be honest with you, because you know international football. These lads play for massive clubs, they play for Liverpool, 
they play for Chelsea, then they're, they're under the scrutiny and spotlight all the time, but honestly there is nothing like England in a tournament, and I think a few of these younger players are probably for the first time recognizing what it's like to have the heat on them in a tournament. It's brutal. It's unforgiving and you sometimes feel it's unfair when you're in there. I've been there myself and I remember times when we reacted particularly poorly to it. And there were times where we wouldn't speak to the press as a group because of, to be fair, what we perceived to be bullying of players back in the day. And we were defending the players I think that was probably a position that Harry Kane and Declan Rice have taken this week by coming out as the senior players and sort of just punching back a little bit but I said last night before the game it's the first time I've seen this group of players a little bit sort of you know nerfed by the criticism that's come. Their way no one likes criticism, everyone wants praise, they've had a lot of it over the last few years and they deserve that for their performances. But I think they've set themselves a standard now that if they don't reach that means that they are going to obviously have some criticism thrown at them and it's the first time I've seen them get dragged into the weeds a little bit. We got dragged into the weeds quite often back in the day and you know it created a fear factor amongst the group because of the perceived sort of what would be, what would happen if we were the player that made the mistake you know there was a collection of players who were absolutely battered at. The end of tournaments if they made errors you know Gareth was one of them if you remember back in Euro 96 but David Beckham, Wayne Rooney, my brother and other players since they don't want to be that player and this team have freed themselves of that in the last few years and I hope they can just relax in the next few days knowing they're qualified for the, for the knockout phase and they can be themselves and not carry too much. Thought about what's happening outside and externally. I think that journalism is a lot more considered now but maybe there are other areas of the media which are a little bit more sort of direct and the players find it difficult. But what you'll never get away from is the players might not see it themselves but it's their parents and their families. That feel it as my mum and dad did back in the day but it got to the point where I had to speak to my mum and dad to tell them that I don't want them to relate to me anything that they'd seen in the media because it was never going to help me. Those messages of sort of criticism or negativity that occurred really get to your family, they really get to your friends. They take it personally and every England player has been through it that's played for England in tournaments and a number of times but what you have to do try and do is actually try and completely ignore it if you can, if you do hear about it but actually I think maybe having a conversation with friends and family you know not to forward on text to what someone said not to ring you up and say have you seen what so and so said on this station or that station because it isn't going to help the player it really isn't.